in some considerable confusion about the rising cases. So let me provide a quick update and talk about three specific topics. And I'll give it to you straight, as I promised you I always would. We're going to see, as you all have been hearing, continued rise in cases. Omicron is very transmissible, transmissible variant, but much different than anything we've seen before. And But you can protect yourself. And you should protect yourself, quite frankly. Get vaccinated. Get boosted. There's plenty of booster shots. Wear a mask while you're in public. Because what we know is this. The impact from the rising cases depends on the effect on the person based on whether that person, what their vaccination status is. You can control how big an impact Omicron is going to have on your health if you get Omicron. You know, they're, they're, those that are fully vaccinated, especially those with the booster shots. And by the way, we have booster shots for the whole nation, okay? We, you can still get COVID, but it's highly unlikely, very unlikely that you become seriously ill. And we're seeing COVID-19 cases among vaccinated in workplaces across America, including here at the White House. But if you're vaccinated and boosted, you are highly protected. You know, be concerned about Omicron, but don't be alarmed. And if you're unvaccinated, you have some reason to be alarmed. Many of you will, uh, you know, uh, uh, you'll experience severe illness in many cases if you get COVID-19, if you're not vaccinated. Some will die, needlessly die. Unvaccinated are taking up hospital beds and crowding emergency rooms and intensive care units. That's just places other people need access to those hospitals. So please, please, please get vaccinated now. You know, we've reduced the number of American adults without any shots from 90 million to about 35 million in the past six months. There's still 35 million people not vaccinated. And let me be absolutely clear. We have in hand all the vaccines we need get every American fully vaccinated, including the booster shot. So there's no excuse. I don't see for anyone being unvaccinated. This continues to be a pandemic of the unvaccinated. So we got to make more progress. And for patients who still haven't gotten your kids vaccinated, please get them vaccinated. Look out for their interest here. It's the best way to protect them. And for parents with kids <clears throat> too young to be vaccinated, Surround your kids with people who are vaccinated and make sure you're masking in public so you don't get COVID and give it to your kids. Look, we have no reason to think at this point that Omicron is worse for children than previous variants. We know that our kids can be safe when in school, by the way. That's why I believe schools should remain open. You know, they have what they need. Because of the American Rescue Plan, where the first month we were in office, or second month, that I signed in March, we provided the states with $130 billion, with a B, billion dollars, to specifically keep our students safe and schools open. Funding for ventilation, ventilation systems in the schools, social distancing classrooms, even larger classrooms on buses and everything from bus drivers to buses, the, the, the actual bus. There are additional, in all this process, we also back then included an additional $10 billion for testing for schools. That money went out to the states and the states and the school districts have spent this money well, many of them, but unfortunately some haven't. So I encourage the states and school districts to use the funding that you still have to protect your children and keep the schools open. <clears throat> Countries across the world are seeing rising cases. Here in the United States, our team has been working around the clock during the holiday weeks. In the last two weeks, we have developed hundreds of military, we have deployed, I should say, hundreds of military doctors and nurses to staff the hospitals in our states that are overrun and overworked because of unvaccinated COVID-19 patients primarily. The Federal Emergency Management Association uh, Agency, FEMA, is also working in our direction in every state and hospital capacity. 
including whether they need beds. I've directed FEMA to be ready to provide emergency hospital beds wherever and whenever they're needed. The federal government will be there. We've shipped nearly 2.4 million pieces of protective equipment to hospitals from gowns to gloves. And we're doing uh, whatever we can to protect communities from the surge of hospital cases that are likely to see from, unvac from the unvaccinated population.